you know, with the amount of numbers that Nor North Carolina like to get into the attack, the back four for the Seminoles have to be on the same page. Nesbeth in the midfield, she'll dictate the tempo, and then up top, take your pick. You have Echigini, Olsen, Dudley all have the ability to exploit in behind or take on 1v1. And for UNC, this is how we think it'll look at the beginning, but they can move around as the game goes along. Yeah, we thought maybe there would be a formation change in switching to a four back. Instead, they've opted to go with a familiar 3-2-4-1. Regardless, King and Bell will anchor the back line. Meza in the midfield, she'll have the ability to roam, find the game, and then leading the line up top is Sitnor. Three goals, two assists, with Patterson providing the support out wide left. Four goals, one assist for her on the season. Tropical depression, Ophelia pushed through here yesterday. It postponed the men's game against Duke to 4 p.m. later today. Thankfully, sun is shining bright. Some clouds overhead. What was feared to maybe be a bit of a washout or a difficult weather game. Not at all the case. Mother Nature smiling down on us for this one. Number one UNC, number three FSU. First meeting of this year. Their regular season meeting last year was a win for the Tar Heels in Tallahassee. And they played again twice beyond that ACC final. FSU took home the trophy and the College Cup semifinal. It was UNC getting through. FSU left to right in their burgundy. UNC right to left in the white. Alex Biller, the referee in purple. Happy to have you with us today for the ACC on ESPN. The everybody has circled on their calendar. When do UNC and FSU meet? The answer, September 24th here at noon on ESPNU, and we're underway. Oh. 49th meeting all time between these programs. FSU leads the series with 31 victories, and they've been terrific at home, 10-2 and 4. Lately, though, it's been split just about down the middle. Last 10 matchups, five UNC wins, four FSU wins, and one draw. All three of last year's matchups were terrific. One goal affairs, high stakes, ACC final, College Cup semifinal. And this really sets the tone, Lori, for what is to come as far as seeding in tournaments go. Starts really here. Two teams undefeated right now in conference play. Yeah, and it starts with the first 15 to 20 minutes of this game as well, Joe. Just setting the tone. North Carolina at home. We're already seeing them keep a bit of possession, working their way into the attack. They'll send numbers forward and look to put the Seminoles under a lot of pressure early on in this game. And then for Seminoles, quick turnaround as well for them. Both teams playing competitive matches on Thursday evening. So who can settle in? who can get control of the game at times, but then also just dig deep, find ways to overcome potentially some of the tired legs and the back and forth game that we expect to see here this afternoon. Sent out wide for Echigini. Echigini fronted by Bell, slips it through now. He's looking for a pace coming through the line. Switch over to Sophia Wynn, and now Leilani Nesbeth. Well, oh, Brian Penske calls the true alpha queen dog of the midfield more than all. Slip through by up in front, and Emmy Allen got a piece of it, still loose, and now pounces to it. Almost a dream start for Florida State. Well, you're spot on, Joe. Dream start for Florida State, getting numbers around, and it all starts with Nesbeth. Look at the loads of space that she has in the midfield. She'll be the one that dictates this tempo for the Seminoles, when to speed things up, when to slow it down, moving it side to side. She gets this attack started, and they got two in the box, and that is a, a close opportunity from the Seminoles away from home in the opening few minutes of this game. Almost feels like this is where the season truly begins for these two teams. They've had interesting starts to the year based on the scheduling, based on opponents. FSU had a two week gap in there, so both are still looking to find that true rhythm and find the lineup combos that both coaches are happiest with. Almost feels like today is the beginning of the true run in to the ACC tournament for both. Who gets off on that right foot? La Baruta back for Macy Bell into Evelyn Shores, who's emerged as a starter here in the defensive midfield for UNC. Anson Dorrance loves that she's left-footed on the left side of that midfield. Helps so much with the service. Oh, 
all the way back for Christina Roque, who Brian Penske believes is due for a big game. Puerto Rican senior national team goalkeeper has been an absolute star in her time here at FSU. Bell steps to this one. Moxley and Colton. Emily Colton battling Lauren Flynn out for a UNC throw. We weren't really sure who would be on that right side, either Emily Colton, who saw it every game so far, or Kate Fossey, who impressed against UVA. Brian Penske, now in his second year in charge of FSU, has a lot to figure out as the day goes along. UNC, Lori, we know they will circulate players in and out with some frequency. Yeah, and that will be the key for the Seminoles to get some sort of result here is just managing the amount of players that are going to come in and, and the difference in formation that we might see for North Carolina is we're going to see a bit of a, a foul on that far side. But how does Florida State manage the amount of players, the rotation for North Carolina, the fresh legs that come in? It's a North Carolina team that in the second half can continuously put teams under pressure and it's going to be an opportunity here for North Carolina off a set piece with Moxley standing over it. Set piece is so crucial. First one for UNC. The header saved by Roque. Right at her. Good positioning. But one that Macy Bell would have liked to have done better with. Well, we're going to see Macy Bell throughout this game in the run of play, get into the attack, but also be the focal point off of set pieces. And this will be a bit of a warning sign for the Seminoles. Macy Bell just get a little bit of separation between her and her defender. Clear header, but right to Roquet in the end. A good start for both teams end to end already and hold an opportunity for each side. Macy Bell, somebody that could go forward late in games. Chance again brewing for the Tar Heels. Patterson looking through. And Dorrance told us as much that, hey, if it's late in the game and we need a goal, that's the player we're looking to send forward, Macy Bell. He thinks she could be an all-ACC starting nine, but she's an all-American center back, so they keep her back there. <laughs> Colton. And another set piece on the way now. <laughs> and that's maybe why we're going to see Macy Bell streaking up through the central areas, get her into that number nine position at times. That center back pairing they have, Macy Bell, Savvy King. Hilton Dorrance just raves about them both. Said once the U.S. hires the new full-time coach, he will be recommending both of them to be in the conversation. The conversation right now is between Alex Biller and Brian Penske. Things get it heated a bit early on here. You know that the intensity flows here, Lori. I don't know if we'd see it this early, four and a half minutes in, but here we go. Yeah, and that gives you a good indication of how competitive this match is. And you can see Brian Pinsky's arguing that that was a foul on Dudley as she was trying to break free in that transitional moment. If they were going to call that nearsighted foul for North Carolina, that had to be a foul on Dudley. Emerson Elgin set for the in-swinger. Elgin service floated along, and it comes all the way through. Should be another corner on this side for UNC. Off the head of Jordan Dudley. Well, and here's the, the argument that Penske was making, the foul on Dudley. And you see the, the handful of jersey that King has on Dudley. And she's going to be a nuisance all game long in transitional moments, but also when she just sprays out wide, gets the ball to her feet. And King setting the tone early in terms of defense for North Carolina. Those two very familiar with each other, the two freshman teammates for the USU 20s. Floated in from this side. The header is wide and high, but a third corner and rapid succession coming now for the Heels. It's interesting to see FSU under this kind of pressure early on. It typically only allowed 2.5 corners per match. We're already at three for UNC. Make it four. Wide free kicks included. Early set pieces for the Tar Heels. This one floated in again, handed away by Dudley. And it looks like we're going to have a stoppage here from Alex Billiter. Concern of a head injury for Dudley. She went up for that header, slow to get back to her feet, but seems to be all right. Well, Florida State Joe knows that this is going to be a different game than they're used to, will be under pressure at times. So it's going to be about weathering the storm. Three goal, three corner kicks, rather, in quick succession. And there's the collision of heads between Dudley and Bell. Both look to be okay in the end. 
but it's about managing these moments for both teams in this game. When you're under pressure, making sure you're touch tight defensively, not giving the opposition any sort of time and space to get a clear look on goal, whether it's on set pieces or through the run of play. Here's Shores. Evelyn Shores lets it fly through some traffic just wide. Christina Roque off to another strong start this year. ACC Goalkeeper of the Year and All-Conference First Team, Third Team All-American in 2022. Be a win under pressure. Lori FSU is having some trouble just possessing it or getting it across midfield in the early going. Well, and that's the, the key, Joe, for Florida State is, again, managing the moments when they have to defend, but then once they can get a hold of the ball, keeping possession, connecting a few of their passes, it starts with this player right here, Nesbeth, working their way out of traffic and then getting numbers forward in these moments so they're not defending so deeply in their own half. Emerson Elgin, part of a tandem at left back with Tessa Delarose. Elgin gets the start because Anson Doris likes her acceleration to begin games. Avery Patterson has it slipped inside, leading score for this team with four already. Patterson looking for another just over the bar. UNC is knocking on that door early. And defensively right now, Florida State won't be happy. It's just too passive. You can see Patterson picking up this ball, could have easily laid that off to Della Peruta, but instead gets her head up, sees that she has a little bit of space to go herself, gets underneath it, that one's always rising. Could have found the top corner though, and I feel Roque would have been beaten on that attempt, but good start from North Carolina, getting numbers forward, centrally having control of this game, and that's one of the reasons, Joe, that we felt like North Carolina might have switched their formation to be able to get control of the game, but instead, going with the three back, their familiar formation, and off to a wonderful start here at home. Again, the pressure helps them win it back. Sam Mez up. That one's always going wide. Five shots, one on target. We're 10 minutes into this game. FSU had that one sniff of goal just a couple of minutes in, and the Allen got on top of it. No official shot, though, as that one was just a dangerous cross put in. Well, this is what North Carolina does. They smother you with numbers. They like to go forward quickly. Players around the ball, Patterson, Meza will have freedom to roam, pick up the ball wherever they want. And it's going to be difficult and it's going to be important that Florida State has good communication defensively throughout this match. They had a similar situation last year, Florida State, where they had that long ACC road trip twice on the road back to back. They went at UVA, who were number two at the time, and beat them 1-0. Then they went on the Sunday on the road against Notre Dame, lost four to nothing. That's been on the forefront of their mind this week. Brian Penske addressed it with his team, said, look, we had the same situation. We beat Syracuse in the midweek. We cannot have that same letdown in the same noon kickoff now on Sunday. And that's where mentality comes in. Just digging deep at times, this game might not be pretty. You have to work through those difficult times, defending a ton more than you're used to, not having control of possession. But if you can manage them and then come through, but digging deep, having big players step up when needed, and that will mostly be the front line, because right now we're seeing Echeguini having to defend deep in her own half. Another corner, number four for UNC. Emerson Elgin will take it again, the redshirt sophomore. Start every game this season now. Elgin lofted toward the back post, over the head of Bell. Cycled back to the top for a strike. That's blocked off the foot of Ali Sentinor. Driven back in over the top. Roque got a hand to it. 
Another corner, make it five. That's already double the season average per game allowed by FSU in terms of corners, and it's just about 12 minutes in. Oh, aggressive play from Roque to come off her line because North Carolina did have runners on the back post, and right now, this is where Roque has to be getting her team on the same page, fired up, get a hold of the ball, clear this one out of any sort of danger because they've been under loads of pressure throughout the first 15 minutes. It was the opposite for FSU against Syracuse. They were the ones firing the barrage of shots. Goalkeeper standing on her head. Might be Roque who has to come up big this time. No trouble on this corner. FSU outshot Syracuse 13 to two in the first half of that game in the midweek. And then 19 to nothing from that point forward. Only squeaked it out in the end, three to two, because of how well the goalkeeper was playing for Syracuse. And Brian Penske said that Roque might have to have one of those days of her own today. Looking like that might be the case early on. Well, it's hard to believe with that difference in shots. Florida State finding themselves down two to one, Joe, in the first half of that game versus Syracuse and had some pre prescribed substitutions, knowing that they were gonna play North Carolina in this game, hoping to get some more players, some rest, but the way that that game went, thinking a few goals early on, forced players to have to play more minutes than they wanted to, and that's where digging deep, that's where finding those moments to, to slow the game down. If you're Florida State away from home, is gonna be incredibly important throughout this 90 minutes. That's endurance very complimentary of FSU. It's a rivalry built completely on respect. You almost come into a season knowing you're gonna face each other more than just the once. Here's Dudley forcing her way through the middle. And King gets it clear. Again, those two were teammates for the USU 20s earlier this year. Lost the final of the U20 championship to Mexico back in June. And now match up with each other, Dudley. Florida State King, center back for UNC. Dudley, three goals, three assists in her seven games to begin her collegiate career. Top draw soccer preseason freshman, best 11. Savvy King on the other side, top 10 recruit. Somebody that again, Anson Dorrance already feels is nearing the level of a full national team call up for the United States. Well, how good has she been? whether they're playing in a four-back or a three-back. Such a wonderful compliment to the other two, Elgin and Bell, on that back line. And it allows them to put, put themselves in these positions, to be aggressive with sending numbers four. They still have coverage on that back line with those three. And already off to a wonderful start here at home. Smothering Florida State right now and really making it difficult for them to get, even get out of their own defensive half. Now it's about converting these opportunities. This is now a sixth corner. Their first two ACC games combined at UNC had three corners. They have six in 15 minutes. The sustained pressure though, will it pay off with the opener? For a sixth time from the corner, for a sixth time. Nothing doing initially, but they'll have a seven. comes across to take this one. Moxley toward the back of the six. So well defended through seven corners now from the Knowles. Curled back in, headed back away. This time it's Heather Gilchrist. At some point they have to find some time on the ball, FSU. Otherwise they're in for a long day. Driven back through, again off the chest of Gilchrist and skied by Patterson. Coming up later at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific over on ESPN2, the second of our WNBA playoff semifinals. Enrique Bimbawale and the Wings take on Asia Wilson and the defending champion Aces. You can always catch the game live on ESPN and the app. Roque needs a moment. Down for FSU. Four 
49th meeting all time between these two programs. Early on, it was, of course, UNC dominating as they had their couple decade reign of terror under Anson Dorrance. But lately, things have been a lot closer, so don't be fooled by the 31, 12, and 5 all time. You know, UNC won two of three last year, but in the last 10 overall, five wins for the Tar Heels, four for the Seminoles, and one draw. And Laurie, it's not just regular season games. They're meeting in NCAA College Cups and title games. The 2018 final was FSU over UNC. Basically, every ACC final, you could pencil these two teams in. Sorry <laughs> to your UVA Cavaliers, but it's usually these two teams. And every single time, it just gets better and better. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Joe. Uh, especially <laughs> in the first uh, 15 minutes of this game. No, but I think it just speaks to the the ability of both of these teams, the program, the history, how they continue to build, find ways to stay on top in these games. As we're already seeing North Carolina with the majority of the possession, no doubt the majority of the opportunities and corner kicks so far to start this game, but always competitive, typically end-to-end -end with both teams having a number of chances. And it's a good opportunity right now, especially for Florida State, just to regroup, figure out how they can get out of their own defensive end because North Carolina doing what they do best, smothering them, being ruthless with their approach. And I imagine this talk right now, though, is about decision-making and converting those opportunities because the only thing that's missing so far is that final product right now for North Carolina. And the last thing you want is the Florida State team to be able to hang around, not convert your chances, and allow Florida State to be able to nick one in a transitional moment. And Laura, you'd like to think that FSU has to try to get a hold of this quickly because as the game goes along, we know UNC will cycle through players and stay fresh and the level doesn't really drop. Florida State, Brian Penske's roster by design is smaller. He thinks that's a way to get everybody feeling like they're more part of the team. So he came into this year with a 22 player roster. They lost two to injury in the summer. They lost one to injury in the opening game. That brings them down to 19. They have a couple of players away on international duty and they're down to 16 available for this game. So they won't be able to supplement the players in and out and stay fresh the way that UNC can. Well, and that's a risk that you take when you have a, a small numbered squad is a poor giveaway from Roque right off of the goal kick. And here they are again, putting themselves under pressure defensively. And when it's a small roster, great step from Nesbeth and she's gonna break out now with numbers going forward for Florida State. Nesbeth looking through for Dudley. Here is Dudley cutting inside. Dudley against the run of play. The freshman gives the Seminoles the lead. Well, and we mentioned it moments ago. The last thing you want if you're North Carolina is to allow Florida State to hang on, not convert your chances, and then in these transitional moments, They'll make you pay. And look at that ball from Nesbeth, perfectly weighted into the path of Dudley. It allows her to take that first touch, cut against the defender's momentum right here, sets herself up, another touch to get out from underneath her feet, and then the third touch in the back of the net, just like that, against the run of play, away from home. All the momentum in the favor of North Carolina, but Florida State up 1-0 here at Dorrance Field. Just as we were saying, at some point you got to punch back. That they do. Jordan Dudley, the freshman, four goals now and eight games to begin her career. And we highlighted that matchup off the top. Dudley against King, the two freshmen, the two U20 teammates, highly touted. It was Dudley getting the better of King on that one. Well, and one thing that Brian Pinsky has talked about throughout this season is his team having a bit more edge. Yes, they might have a smaller squad in terms of numbers, but it's finding that ruthlessness as well on both sides of the ball, being better inside both boxes, and then taking their chances and continuing to fight. And that little stoppage in play came at a perfect time. Roque goes down, it allows them to collect themselves. And we mentioned Nesbeth's gonna be an important part, whether it's about speeding the game up, slowing it down in those central areas, and what a ball that was to allow for Dudley to break out, set her up for success, and ultimately, Put the Seminoles up 1-0. All starts with Nesbitt. Love to give the six some shine when you can. So under the radar, they always fly. She won it. She played the ball in for the assist. And again, as Brian Penske calls her, the queen alpha dog of this team, the vocal leader, heart and soul. Leilani Nesbitt gets it started. And we're going to see that foul. Looks like it's going to be on pace on that far side. And good look at... Leilani Nesbeth and how important she is to this team. And you said it right. 
The number six, the holding midfield, Joe, doesn't always get a lot of love, but typically the most important position for each team, controlling the tempo, dictating the tempo, moving it side to side. And for North Carolina now, it is about the response that they're gonna have, not getting down, not putting their heads down, continuing to fight, getting numbers forward, putting the Seminoles under pressure as we've seen majority of this first half so far. They had another top 10 matchup on this field earlier this year, UNC, when they hosted Arkansas. And similarly, they dominated the early going. Arkansas scored against the run of play. Ensign Dorans remained ever calm as he is on the sideline. And they stormed back and won that one with three unanswered, three to one. Sure he would like the same outcome today, but it's maybe a step up though from Arkansas to FSU. And that's no disrespect to an Arkansas team that is impressed this year, number 11 in the country in the SEC. But FSU is a different beast. These are the top two teams year in, year out. And one area where Brian Penske wanted to clean things up after the first seven games of the season. Cut down the defensive mistakes. They've been sound today in that regard. Spend more time on the ball so they can create more chances. They haven't satisfied that box. They've barely seen the ball, but the moment they had, they made the most of it. Well, this is good already. Just stringing a few passes together. Certainly don't want to lose it in this area, especially to a player like Neza, who will want North Carolina to get on the ball more often because she does have the ability for North Carolina to open up this game, create those overloads in the attack, and her ability to, to dribble, take players on 1v1 could open up the scoring for North Carolina. Taylor Huff covering through the middle. Macy Bell wins it back. Released up the wing for Colton, but too much on it. Probably Moxley giving a chase. For as much as they've been on the ball, UNC, they haven't really been in sync when they've gotten to the final third. No, they haven't, and that is going to be the challenge for them is finding those moments. Yes, you want to go forward quickly, as we're going to see here. They want to get numbers, but can they stay patient? If it's not on, move the ball around, force Florida State to have to defend because you've referenced this a few different times already, Joe, the, the numbers, the depth that North Carolina has, they can freshen up the legs at any moment really force the Seminoles have to defend. Sentinor trying to force her way through. She is so dangerous playing like that in a phone booth. And Anson Doran's credits it with <laughs> her futsal background, actually. It's a completely different move set, completely different bit of skill on the ball. It's happened a couple of times this year where she has somehow squeaked through multiple defenders, and all of a sudden, it's a goal when it seemed like she had no chance of going anywhere. Yeah, that 5-3, low center of gravity as well. And, and typically with futsal, you play with a, a smaller ball that's heavier, so it's more difficult to move so than when you get into a regular ball in a regular size game. No doubt. On an angle taken, Huff comes through but pulls it near post. Here's our Sunday Night Baseball matchup with a little more than a week left in the regular season. The crew will be at Chavez Green for the big series finale between the Giants and Dodgers. LA has clinched their 10th NL West title in 11 years. San Francisco in the wild card chase. Big game for both 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Radio. Coverage begins at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific with baseball tonight and Sunday Night Countdown. Taylor Huff, that last chance for FSU. Almost an under-the-radar player with some of the other headlines that go to at Chikini and what Nesbeth does at the midfield and what Dudley has done in her freshman year. But that's a player, Huff, that traveled with Brian Penske from Tennessee to FSU and just every step of the way has been top-notch. And an important piece this season as well because when you think of what Florida State lost, Jenna Neiswanger, who's now playing in the NWSL with... Gotham FC, Claire Robbins, who's with North Carolina Courage. Those are two huge leaders, important pieces that helped them win the ACC championship last year and really just propelled them under the new coaching change last season. So to miss those two players, but to be able to pick up Huff alleviates some of that loss, especially through the midfield. And she has the ability, Joe, to, to play on that front line, but also deeper in the midfield. So I wouldn't be surprised 
at times as this game wears on. If the scoreline does stay the same, then even drop her a little bit deeper next to Nesbitt to give them a bit more security in front of that back four for Florida State. Talked a bit about that, Brian Penske. Might they morph into a diamond midfield, depending on how the look is. But then again, we thought that UNC might be coming in with a four back, they coming with a three back. It's always a chess match between these two programs as well. You get the intensity on the field, but then you also get the intensity between the ears. that we hadn't seen a change to this point for UNC. Typically have some of those pre-planned subs about halfway through the first half. Not too far off of that time, and it looks like we're gonna have one coming up here in just a moment. Tessa Delaro is up and ready. State. Only event Zan comes on for Ronnie White. Della Rose for Della Peruta. Van Zan has been a regular off the bench. Just one start on the air, but plays near starter minutes. Has an assist to her name. Played in that U20 tournament back right, in late right, spring. Right. But on Jamaica, not a teammate of Savvy King or Dudley for the U.S. Pace for Leilani Nesbitt wants to shoot one here. It's deflected. Emmy Allen played the deflection well. Well, Turks with Olsen, the center forward for Florida State. And we haven't called her name a ton so far in this game because it has been a bit more transitional for the Seminoles, but when she gets the ball to her feet, can certainly link play, move the ball around. She allows for Van Zanten to get a fierce first few touches, and then Nesbeth can unleash that opportunity. And another good look from Florida State as they build themselves into this game, find a bit more confidence with numbers around the ball, higher pressures we're seeing right now. Here's Moxley. And Doran's acknowledged the ceiling this team has for UNC. Still have some work to do to get there. Very happy with what he's seen so far through 10 games. It's tough to not be happy when you're the number one team in the country, but always a perfectionist, always striving for more. A team that hasn't won a national championship since 2012, which considering their standards is basically 100 years. for Allen. Allen, a difficult one played out of the back here. Intercepted by Dudley. She goes down awkwardly. No call made. And Chagini lets it fly. Probably that's Leah Pace. And it stopped. Well, much better for Florida State. Just picking their moments. When they're going to high press force North Carolina to have to go backwards and then just sits off and waits for that initial pass. Aaron out of the back from North Carolina and Dudley in the exact position the Seminoles want her in to pick off that pass and then they have numbers going forward and that's where this game has changed. After the go-ahead goal for the Seminoles been able to step out and step up their pressure defensively and really outside of those first 15 minutes or so North Carolina haven't been able to get a hold of the ball and create many chances going forward. No call there. UNC is hoping for the free kick in a very advantageous position. Now Dudley clipped initially from behind. Alex Blitter says play on, and now will bring it back for the foul. Trying to play the advantage, never really materialized. And a set piece coming up for the Knowles. How good has she been so far to start this game? Not a lot of touches in the early moments. 
but then in one moment changes the course of the game with the go-ahead goal. That started the play. It was questionable whether or not there was going to be a foul. It's played on, and then on the other end, Dudley could have gone to ground herself initially, and then that ball brought back when the advantage was no longer. And sets the Seminoles up for an opportunity, a dangerous free kick, and go directly off of this set piece on goal or flight it in. Guys, be ready for the, be ready for the job. Emmy Allen making sure that back line organized here. High line at the 18. Chagini standing over it. There you go, short something off the training ground here, looking through for Chagini. You can see what the idea was, almost worked out. It's Gilchrist stepping up into the midfield, looking through for Chagini. Well won by Moxley, now UNC wants to break out. Haven't seen them on the break a ton because of the way they possessed and controlled things. And this one is slowed down well by FSU in their transitional defense. Moxley not on the same page. And out for a goal kick. But immediately just look at Florida State. And this is where North Carolina will want to improve because they know they have to keep the ball a bit better. If it's not on to go quickly, just be patient, pick out a pass, connect it, and then allow for more runners to develop, get into the attack because Florida State is doing such a good job of getting numbers quickly behind the ball. I was just watching Echeguini. As soon as that ball is turned over, she's getting back into a position in the midfield. And at times, she's not even playing as a left winger. She's slotting into the midfield. It's almost like they're playing that hybrid 4-4-2 diamond Joe at times. Doesn't get a lot of credit for her defensive work, but she's excellent on both sides of the ball and been such an important piece coming back from the World Cup so far this summer. I made three appearances there for Nigeria. All ACC second team last year. They really tried to slowly work her back in, not only having to be at the World Cup and, of course, play those games, but the travel takes a massive toll. Worlds apart going all the way to Australia, New Zealand. That was part of the sort of awkward start to the year that Florida State had. Ryan Penske said it was a little bit difficult gaining that rhythm. They had to work some of those players back in, which slowed them down. Then they had a two-week break. Then it's been some games on the road. This is their third consecutive game on the road. It's been an awkward start. But if this is a launching pad for them, possibly a win on the road, feather in their cap and a way to set things in motion. Look out for the Seminoles going through this year. And they certainly have gone to that 4-4-2 diamond with pace on the top. Huff has dropped to the right side, Echeguini on the left side, and then it's Dudley and Olsen up top for the Seminoles. And at times we're gonna Sammy see right. Olsen just drop in a bit deeper to create almost five in the midfield. One try, one try, one the try. challenge will be for the Seminoles, oh, it's just oh. creating the width. Can they get it quickly enough? Because North try. Carolina is comfortable converging essentially. Nesbeth for Huff. Dudley looking to turn. Almost slipped through, now it's Echeguini. Back for Huff. She's taken down. This one is in shooting territory. And Florida State has a chance here to go up too. Well, we're talking about the Florida State formation changes. I wouldn't be surprised if North Carolina might go back to that 4-2-3-1 that we saw them go to in their Virginia game on Thursday evening because there's the foul. And right now, all of the control is from Florida State. Goals do that. They change the course of games. Since then, Florida State has composed themselves, been able to build, go quickly in the attacks, but also connect a few passes, get a bit of possession as well. And, and no answers right now for North Carolina. They're defending. They're conceding opportunities outside the box on set pieces. And for Florida State, a big opportunity. A little over 10 minutes left to go for them to try to get a second one, create a little bit of separation in this lead. Huff and Nesbeth standing over it. It's exactly where you want it. Center cut could go either side of the keeper, far enough to get it over the wall, under the bar. Taylor made for a strike on goal. 
It will be Huff, and it's just over the bar. Well, the right amount of speed, whip just can't get it up and over and down. It's always the most difficult part when it's so close, just outside the 18-yard box. We're going to see another few changes for North Carolina. Quick breather for Olsen and Chigini. Deline Rubimbasin for UNC, Marcus Teitano for Florida State. One area where Hanson Dorrance has been frustrated this year is giving the ball away too much. It's their MO to try to play like Manchester City. They have an adoration for that club among the coaching staff, and they want to just try to play that way, keeping the ball movement into the space. They've been giving it away probably a bit too often for his liking over the last 10, 15 minutes. Well, especially with the amount of numbers they have in the midfield, you can call it a 3-2-4-1. So essentially they have a box in the central areas, and there has to be better movement, better angles for them to be able to keep a lot, a lot of the opportunities right now in or 1v1 situations. Can they move it a bit quicker, bypass that first line of pressure from Florida State? Because that's where they're getting caught. Just too slow or not enough support to be able to build out. This one set through. It falls nicely for Dalene. She lays it off for Sentinor. Ali Sentinor had it blocked. Always looking to get that ball on her left foot. Got the winner against UVA, the winner against Arkansas. Cutting to that left side. That one blocks. Under 10 to play here now in this first half. Happy to have you with us on a glorious afternoon in Chapel Hill with Lori Lindsay. I'm Joe Malfa. Goal came early from Dudley for FSU. UNC has been trying to get it back ever since, and there's too much on that one for the lead to make anything of it. Coming up later at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific over on ESPN2, the second of our WNBA playoff semifinal games. Rike Gunbowale and the Wings take on Asia Wilson and the defending champion Aces. You can always catch the game live on the ESPN app as well. Give it away before Nesbeth pounds to it. How many times has she bailed them out of trouble already today in that holding midfield role? And there's that final product right now from North Carolina. And, and that will certainly be the halftime talk for Anson Dorrance, Damon Nahas, just making sure that they stay a bit more patient, the decision making. And, and that's a tough part. When you want to go forward, when you want to create, can you also slow things down, get more numbers going forward and be a bit more unpredictable? Because there are opportunities right now for North Carolina to easily get themselves back in this game with the amount of fresh legs, the ability to rotate the ball. It's just about finding that open player and somebody taking charge out there on the field. Because right now it certainly feels like people are passing off the onus to other players that are coming onto the field. It's been Sentinor who's taken the last four strikes for UNC. They haven't really tested Roque all that much. For the nine shots they've taken, only one on target on Roque. And that came in the early going. And for the amount of set pieces, quarter kicks that they had early on, Joe, weren't dangerous enough on those. And that leaves you vulnerable, as we saw in the, the transitional moment that Dudley took so well. Leave yourself susceptible, especially sitting numbers forward. Maybe something on here, though. Rubimbus with some space, not much help, though. And she can't get past Nesbitt. Nesbitt.
attempt that she keep it in. How about that hustle to win it, to keep it in and clear it further away. Player of the match so far. Yeah, and not the, the final pass. She puts her head down. She knows it. Would want that one back, but look at the work. Yeah, and, and that might have been out initially anyway, but just the tenaciousness to get back. And we talked about it coming into this game, the mentality to do the little things, to dig deep, to be the difference maker. Sometimes that's not the goal score. Sometimes it's about playing that final pass, doing the work on the other end. Right now it's the work being done by Della Rose. Deline. Hey, Deline working inside. And back out for a throw. Careless little foul there. Free kick on the way for UNC. Sophia Wynn came in clumsily. It's taken quickly. Della Rose puts it up. That's an interesting decision there. They've been good on those set pieces from out wide. They haven't scored, of course, off the corner or one of those wide free kicks, but they've been dangerous. So to take that one quickly seems almost like a moment squandered by the Tar Heels. Dalene, working past wing, goes down, and it's a penalty. Remember, it can be reviewed because it was given. Can't do it the other way around, not call it and then review it. So it can be reviewed, but initially penalty here for the heels. Well, Dalene has had a, a few good opportunities since coming in, and this is exactly what you want to do because we've talked about tired legs we've talked about taking players on one v one you're playing at home one versus three taking the onus and Darlene does just that driving in forcing the foul on win it can't keep her feet moving and certainly takes her down and gives macy bell who looks like she's going to step up to the spot to take this one a really critical opportunity late in this first half to equalize Richard Senior out of Wichita. Fell through a table, actually, against UVA. That's the wrap on her wrist there. <laughs> Heard it almost before the game, but was good to go for today. Doesn't have a goal yet on the season. Has five in her UNC career. A player that they're comfortable throwing forward as an extra nine late in games because she has that scoring touch, even as a center back. Can she do it now from 12 yards out? Bell against Roque. Macy Bell skies it. Well, she knows she needs to do better in that moment. Really outside of the first 15 minutes, this is the best opportunity that North Carolina has had because it's been all Florida State since scoring the go-ahead goal. And Aline draws the foul. Macy Bell steps up, skies that one. Okay, had gone the wrong way and head in her hands, as you know, and she knows that, that is a big miss, but now it's about regrouping last few minutes of this first half and continuing to fight, continue to drive into the box, see if they can draw more fouls, create more opportunities. Roque committed so early to her right, it seemed like Bell would just have to roll it in. And in some ways you wonder, Joe, if that threw her off almost, didn't expect her to commit so early. Now it's Dalene to get it right back from the run of play. Dalene! perspective again that lean just driving in she forces Gilchrist to go to ground but finds just a little bit of space to put that ball across here she is 1v1 and this is so difficult when you have numbers at speed it's a good save initially from Roque off the attempt from Dalene and then they have numbers committed into the box in the six yard area and we're gonna see Pinsky getting the yellow card, but that is a fantastic goal, fantastic response uh, after the missed penalty kick from Macy Bell a second ago. The very next play to go down and get the equalizer.
moments like that where you mentioned top of the broadcast, Lori, it's between the ears, just the mentality. You could be deflated that you just saw one of your top players, one of your leaders miss a penalty. Instead, they say, you know what, let's go get it anyway. Manny Deline starts the attack. Ali Sentinor finishes it for her fourth goal of the year, and it's one to one anyway. Brian Penske did pick up a yellow card. Coaches were jawing at each other a little bit. When it completely changes the energy going into halftime, if you don't have that response, a missed Macy Bell penalty kick, Seminoles away from home up 1 0, but instead, good confidence. And now you see them committed to getting higher pressure up the field, looking to see if they can get one back quickly or another one. Go ahead, goal here at home. Sort of how it went on Thursday for FSU against Syracuse. They had the 1-1 to score line, and they wanted to push for another before halftime, go up 2-1. to one. And instead, it was actually Syracuse who scored that late goal on an own goal. So that's something that the Seminoles have to be careful of here. Cannot have happened today what happened to them on Thursday night. Olivia Garcia now down for Florida State, examined by the trainer. Making her seventh appearance of the season, two of those starts. As a goal to her name, the sophomore from Las Vegas. Broke out last year, mainly off the bench, 20 appearances, only four starts with three goals and five assists. So used to that bench roll, being that spark plug off the bench, really working on that right leg. And this is even another eerie similarity to how things went on Thursday, it was in a huddle with 90 seconds to go in the half that the FSU players got together. Leilani Nesbeth gathered them and they said, hey, let's go get that goal here before halftime. Here we are, three minutes to halftime. Another stoppage because of an injury for these teams to regroup a little bit. For FSU, hope just has to be you don't relinquish the same way you did on Thursday night. Because if UNC is able to get another one here before the half, that's where things, Lori, can maybe snowball a bit after you've been doing so well all half long. And Nesbeth will go over for a breather of her own here at the end of this half. You can <laughs> yeah, see the frustration <laughs> there for the late she concession. Us exactly, Joe, how she feels. No <laughs> well, doubt. We can't say exactly what she said, but you know, you can tell from the body language. Yeah, and that's why it'll be disappointing from a Florida State perspective to concede this late. You get off the hook with a missed penalty kick and then the very next play, the commitment again from Darlene to, to drive at the back line, put them in precarious positions defensively. And, you know, that has to be a talking point for North Carolina is how much can they find those moments to drive into the penalty spot. You have tired legs, both teams, quick turnaround, and a lot of minutes in these last couple of games. So can they put Florida State under pressure knowing that they have a lot more depth, the Tar Heels coming off the bench? Caitlin Zapai came in for Leilani and Esbeth. UNC has mainly been a second half team in terms of their goals this year. That goal from Sentinor is their first, first half goal since five matches ago when they scored two against South Carolina. So many of their goals have come late. Well, this is exactly what you expect when these two teams meet. Not much separating them. 1-1, one, one, probably a fair score. As we're just under two minutes away from the halftime break. Right. 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 Huff, give and go, back for Huff, cleared by Bell. loudest voice you could hear on the field is Emmy Allen has such command of that back line. It's Allen and Talia Della Peruta. Well, Anson Doran's credits as his most vocal leaders. Allen will come out and grab this one. Over the head that time of Rabimis. Part of that number one recruiting class for UNC, the freshman out of Warren, New Jersey, making her 11th appearance here today. One of those to start. Another 
Bill Christ. One thing that changed decisively about midway through this half, Lori, is the possession that Florida State is seeing. They saw almost none of it early. No, they didn't, and that was from the North Carolina pressure that we saw early on and the amount of corner kicks that they earned, making it really difficult for Florida State to even get out of their own half. But this is the variety of ways that the Seminoles can attack in possession or go quickly, as we saw in the deadly goal early in the first half. Try from distance here with the clock winding down, and that'll bring us to the end of the first 45. Lori, it's FSU, it's UNC, it's gone the exact way we expected, intense and tied at the half. Yeah, and shifts in three, ranked number one in the coaches poll and RPI. The Tar Heels began the season number one in the ACC preseason poll. FSU on their heels, a perfect 7-0-0. Number three in the coaches poll and RPI, and number two in that ACC preseason poll. However, these next 45 minutes go, I will sort of set off a domino effect as to how the next two months will go. Which of these teams will have the leg up on seeding in the ACC and potentially in the NCAA tournament. And we're underway now with the second 45. UNC left to right in the white and Florida State right to left in the burgundy. Della Rose, Shores. Lillian Esbeth wins it back. Had a quick breather at the end of the first half, but right back out there as expected for the Seminoles. It's Taylor Huff. Savvy King will regather it. And out for a UNC throw. FSU has been dominant in the second half of matches this season, outscoring opponents 15 to 1. If they could continue that here, they'll be on their way to three points and a big win on the road against the Tar Heels. FSU begins this half with the same 11 who started the game. UNC, a couple of players mixed and matched throughout, but such is the way they typically run their tandems at certain positions. Taylor Huff. <laughs> Evelyn Shores holds her ground. A nice outlet pass as well to Patterson. Della Rose for Talia Della Peruta. It's one of the switches to begin the second half from what began the game for North Carolina. It's all the way back for Christina Roque. For all the shots taken by UNC, has only seen three on target, made two saves. And by EY. Last off of Savvy King. And it doesn't seem like much, Joe, but this is a good start from Florida State because we've referenced it a few different times throughout this game, the amount of depth that North Carolina has to be able to bring off the bench to change the course and the pace of each of the games that they play in. And then for Florida State, a much smaller squad. So at any point in time, if they can manage the game, dictate the tempo in possession, that's going to be favorable for them just to, to save their legs at times because they can't open up the game, go more direct, to find Dudley, to find Olsen, as we're going to see tough collision inside the 18-yard box as Dudley goes down to the ground, holding her face. And both players came out on the wrong side of that one. Elgin bent backward awkwardly, and as she collapsed back over Dudley, caught her in the face with her right hand. Now does again go against Dudley for initiating that contact. Dudley's goal for FSU sent them on their way. Back in the 17th minute, before Sentinor equalized, just moments to halftime. Dudley was lifted in the first half for Olivia Garcia. 
They do need to make that swap again here. No chance for the second half to really get into any rhythm yet. A stoppage like this, only a couple of minutes into the play. And they'll certainly, Joe, just want to make sure that Dudley is okay, not take any risks, but a big loss if she can't continue on because she's been such an important piece to, to the way that they want to attack. Her ability to be direct, that allows for more players to move around as we've seen Echeguini as well drop deeper. And I'm going to take a look at her goal in, in the first half. And it's just a smart play from Nesbeth in good position to pick off a, a square pass and deepen their own defensive end. And then they're off and running. And, and Dudley, always a threat, perfectly weighted ball right into the path. Her first touch is cut across to give herself a little bit of space to beat the defender. And just like that, three touches, she finds the back of the net, puts Seminoles up 1-0, and really, they would have the majority of the play, the majority of the momentum the rest of the first half and until they conceded late, right before halftime. Good to see her up on her feet. Hope she's all right and fit to continue. A special player to watch. right back on here as soon as she's allowed on by Alex Billiter already over with the fourth official waiting to be waved on hopefully it's just a quick little eye issue and the drops in there and back to the action now Emmy Allen sends it back into play Well, these moments are important, Joe, because as we saw, there was a stoppage in play. That would be the difference in the first half for Florida State. Couldn't get out of their own defensive end, and then the stoppage in time, and one of the very next plays, they go off and get the go-ahead goal. Taken away here by Echeguini. Nobody on the receiving end of it. You see Bell steps up. Della Rose put it over the head of Meza. Sent out wide to Huff. Elgin works it around her and up the wing. Nesbeth waited too long. Sentner takes it. And the call is offside. Sentinor seemed to think she timed it perfectly and had a 2v1 coming with Patterson. Well, I think Awfully that is close. A, a, yeah, and in fact, I think she has the correct argument, was onside from the angle that we could tell. And let off the hook is there's a little bit of a hesitation between Nesbeth and I believe it was Flynn. They both were trying to make the play and that allows Sintnor to be able to try to jump on that opportunity. Just beyond Huff. And it was a similar miscommunication in the game against Syracuse that led to a concession for Florida State. Players just like that in that case were looking at each other who would get it, neither did. Syracuse came through and scored. Emily Moxley for the Tar Heels. Moxley takes it to her right, had it blocked by EY. Keep your head, no shoulder. And the legs of Yeah, and for the most part, Joe, they have cleaned up some of those miscommunications. Little lapses defensively that they saw early on. Sentinor, how about that move? Whizzes it through the box, but it's out for a goal kick. <laughs> well, she got the goal, the tying goal in the last few minutes of the first half, and then just showing some of her ability in tight spaces, drawing defenders in a good position to receive that ball right on top of the 18 yard box. And the only thing that is missing as she breaks free, she was a bit of magic, is the, the final product. Just 
gets around it, pulls that one to the far post, and doesn't keep it on frame. Everything else, though, so good from Sintnor. Sam Meza almost had a chance to get on the end of that one as well. Almost turned into an accidental cross. It slipped through now, saved by Roque. Denying Evelyn Shores, who broke out of the midfield on her preferred left foot. Well, this is the patience that was missing in the first half for North Carolina. It goes up and then it goes back to Meza. That's who you want on the ball. And then you get runners coming through and that's difficult to defend. And it was rushed in the first half. They didn't allow for these plays, these runs to develop. Well, they certainly are in the second half and applying the pressure early on against Florida State. Has three goals on the season. Evelyn Shore is no stranger to coming out of the midfield and having an impact. Last angle we showed you though, what a spot that stop that was from Roque. Stopping it dead in his tracks. Shores. Meza. Look behind Sitnar. Okay, coming in, I didn't really had to face that many shots this year, and that's why Ryan Penske felt she was due for a big game today. Might have to come up big again here. Patterson couldn't find an avenue through, and Chagini clears. Well, that's an area of vulnerability that we've seen already a few different times for Florida State is when North Carolina gets a player isolated 1v1, difficult for Florida State defensively to keep their feet moving. I passed a, a few lines of defense, also drew the foul. Macy Bell penalty kick that was in the end missed. But it's something that North Carolina should continue to look for, especially once they get around that 18 yard box. Can they draw more fouls, get themselves isolated, taking on 1v1? Not easy to defend by either team. FSU has not taken a shot in the last 20 minutes of action. Ali Setnor might have another chance here. Setnor tried the early ball. Blocked by Flynn and a corner for UNC. They hadn't had one since the early going of the first half, but mind you, they had seven in the first 20 minutes. <laughs> I think there's three in quick succession back to back in that first half as well, Joe. And this feels like the pressure that we saw in those first 20 minutes. Complete control for North Carolina. And now a bit more patience added into their aggression, sitting numbers forward. Emily Moxley goes to the opposite side here for the in-swinger. Comes out for Sentinor. If you're FSU, that's the last player you want to see have it set up on her left foot, but they're off the hook this time. And tomorrow we'll have two Monday Night Football matchups again. Jalen Hurts leads the 2-0 Eagles against Baker Mayfield and the 2-0 Buccaneers. Special start time of 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ABC and ESPN+. And it's Matthew Stafford and the Rams taking on Jamar Chase and the Bengals. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPN Deportes. Determined to build out of the back here off the short goal kicks FSU, but the pressure from UNC has been getting to them lately, and again, it's won by the Tar Heels. Setnor. Neza lunges in. Nesbeth gets it by. Nesbeth looking long for Dudley, and Lori, I don't know, that might be the last time they go short on a goal kick for a little while here. Yeah, I like the idea, and I like the bravery to play out, wanting to keep possession, draw the pressure from North Carolina and ultimately look to see if they can build around it. But it's a fine line of not overplaying, not putting yourself under pressure consistently. And at times with the front runners you have, if you're the Seminoles, just alleviate pressure, go a bit longer and allow for more numbers to come in underneath the support. Sentinel now with seven of her own shots. FSU has five, has a team. 
That's why we highlighted her at the top, and you were so excited to watch her today. And that's endurance said that the form she's in now, she can take over any game she plays in. Doesn't matter who she's playing against, whether it's somebody as highly ranked as FSU or a team that's a little bit further down the ladder, she can absolutely take it over and be the best player on the field. And she did that against Virginia. That would be the difference is her, her pressure initially at a sprint full force to create the turnover. And then she's not afraid to take players on. And sometimes that's what you need, especially in ACC competition when there's such fine margins, it's difficult to break free. You just need that moment of somebody that's gonna be willing to take their team on the shoulders. She did that in the first half as well to get the tying goal. And now it's one of the reasons why we see them playing it with even more confidence. Macy Bell on this near side, getting higher up the field. Here is Bell. Let's go heel! Let's go heel! One back by Colton. Della Rose forced it inside the shores. Dudley wants to go. They have a 3v2 here. Dudley with Huff to her right. Dudley plays it out for Huff. A little bit behind her, has to slow down. And the shot blocked. Huff into open space for Olsen. Piotta Olsen pulls it wide of the near post. Another well worked counter. It's how they scored in the first half, but this time they don't punish UNC. And she doesn't typically miss those. Olsen so clinical in front of goal. And it's an excellent counter. And you see how much attention Dudley Huff draw. And it leaves Olsen wide open. That's a big miss from the quality of player that she is because it doesn't even hit the frame. Does all the work and then knows it. Can't compose herself, can't get her feet set in time. Just pulls that one far of the near post. But really good transitional moment just shows how deadly they can be with Florida State, whether it's in possession, but also those moments when they can go quickly. And here they go again, looking to go quickly after winning the goal kick. Huff, Dudley, what a turn! Dudley, what a save! Trickling toward the line and kept out by Della Rose. Well, just watch this turn from Dudley. I mean, she has been so good throughout this game, picking up balls deeper in her own half, running that back line. This time, it's so smooth on the turn right there. Draws Macy Bell, gets past her, and that forces Allen to come off her line. And then in the end, clearing that one out of danger as Huff's going to line up over this one for a corner kick for Florida State. Sent toward the back of the box, headed centrally, loose in front, Nesbeth had a crack at it, and now cleared. That was the first corner of the match for FSU. They average almost eight of their own per game. Well, much like we talked about in the first half, Joe, with North Carolina, with the amount of opportunities they had early on, not taking them, same goes for Florida State in these moments because North Carolina came out with some good pressure in the opening minutes. And now Florida State, whether it's on the break, going quickly, 3v2 situations, or some in possession, had a few really wonderful chances that they haven't put away. And that can be the difference in these games. Meza almost caught Flynn napping, a corner coming for UNC. If you need any other indication as to how intense things are getting here in this second half, I just noticed that on the bench, Lori, a lot of people, whether staff members or players who were sitting in the first half, they're up on that sideline now, standing with the rest of everybody else. Yeah, well, we have a corner kick on one end, now at Chagini, one of the midfielders who usually plays on the front line for Florida State, tracking back, sending that one out for a corner kick for North Carolina, so. No doubt everybody is up on their feet and in, in action, exactly what we expected for this game. 15 minutes into this second half, Della Rose in swinger. Top of the six, the header falls from Bell, and it's off of Patterson out for a goal kick. Getting close to the territory where Florida State has excelled this year. At the hour mark now, they've scored 10 of their goals this season in the final 25 minutes of matches from the 65th minute onward. And they have at least one in every single match beyond the 65th minute. 
such a strong team closing out games with goals as needed. Four minutes from that territory now for Brian Penske's bunch. Well read by Setnor trying to put the pressure on. Cleared up to Huff. Wide to Dudley. King wins that battle. Back out to Huff. It slipped through for Echigini and blocked. Last moment intervention by Bell. Corner for the Knolls. Well, the pressure behind the ball for Florida State has been excellent. Initially, it was regained from Huff, and then you have the runners coming out of the midfield. This time it's Echigini. And that forces in North Carolina to have to track those are the little areas of discipline that you have to stay focused in. And swinger from Hoff, yeah! the header is in from Dudley! A brace for the freshman, and the Knolls are back on top! Well, Dudley just showing her commitment, how good she is in the air, and this is going to be disappointing from a North Carolina standpoint because this is a player that cannot be left open on set pieces inside the 18-yard box because she will punish you. Her second of the night, wide open. It's a great delivery from Huff to find the head of Dudley and puts them up two to one. And you felt it coming from Florida State because they've done this in the first half as well where they weathered a bit of the storm early on. The pressure from North Carolina got themselves back into the game through possession, through some good attacks, missed their opportunities, but then Dudley showing up big as a freshman. Two goals on the day, and my goodness how good she has been. And alleviates some of the pressure on Echigini to have to produce game in and game out as well. It's the first time that UNC has conceded two goals in a match this season. All ones and zeros in their previous 10 matches. We weren't quite in that 65th minute or later territory where they've been so good, FSU. They surprised us and went about three minutes early today. I'm sure Brian Penske will be happy about that, not leaving it for so late. Now can they see it through? Here's Dudley. Pace. FSU outscoring opponents 16 to 1 in the second halves of games this season. Have to get through 26 more minutes. Without conceding to the Tar Heels to pick up a massive three points. Would very likely put them to number one. And the polls come next week if they can go ahead and complete this. Once again, it's Nesbeth Joe just showing her commitment and why she's so important because Wynn was too aggressive on that last approach, baited by North Carolina, almost exposed. And those are the moments for Florida State getting the go-ahead goal. And now, can you manage your positioning but also manage the ball? Because we've seen a few substitutions now for North Carolina. They're going to start to send players forward to get the equalizer. Isabel Cox comes on to give Sitnor a quick break. Dalene the same for Patterson. Echigini puts her shoulder in the Delarose, works it to the end line. Back out for EY over the top. The header is just wide. First time we will see Kate Fossey now coming on for Emily Moxley. She's a player that we thought actually might start today after the performance that she had against Virginia. Della Peruta comes back in as well for Della Rose. It'll be interesting. 
interesting to see if all these subs for UNC now down a goal change the shape and change the attacking mindset. The focus on the defensive mindset though here again as Echigini wins it back. Well, she's on another level. It makes it look so easy. The smoothness, understanding when to take on 1v1, go herself, when to look for combination play. And why it's been the deadly show in terms of goals, Echigini has played such an important role today. Sitting in the midfield, tracking back defensively, Still plenty of time, so they're going to need more out of her and her fitness level is to be able to go end to end right now, cover ground, sit next to Nesbitt the times, anchor the midfield. And the formation change that we've seen, not easy in game, but Echigini has been at the heart of that on both sides of the ball so far today. Similar to the first half, this second half just switched on a dime about midway through. FSU had gone 20 minutes without a shot. Now they've taken the last five in a row. And a yellow will be shown here to Leah Pace. Well, Leah Pace will be happy to take that yellow card because it's aggression. It's frustrating North Carolina. You saw the reaction. Here's Pace bringing this ball out. Does so well. Just brings it down through traffic. And then the good pressure from Della Baruta. But then the frustration sets in. And this is where Florida State can cause even more problems. Start moving it side to side, force North Carolina to chase because North Carolina, it's not they haven't been in these positions before. They're gonna start to flood players forward. They're gonna press hard. They're gonna fight to get the equalizer. And 23 minutes is a lot of time to play, especially when you're playing away from home in this environment at North Carolina. Space to maneuver for Macy Bell. It slipped into Colton, pushed ahead here, but Roque off her line to snatch it from Isabel Cox. Well, there's gotta be pressure on the ball from Florida State because you can't have three runners for North Carolina on your back line trying to get on the end of that through ball, but no pressure initially. So somebody has to take the initiative to step out, deny the pass, or everyone has to drop. Make sure those runners don't make it through. the edge. It's a spin now from Cox, but okay there again. Starting to play a little bit more direct now, funneling things through uh, Isabel Cox. Better on this team. Brad student now. All appearances this year off the bench. 15 goals, 20 assists in her first four years. Here at UNC was part of that terrific tandem with Alessia Russo back in 2019, her freshman season, Cox. State, home game against Miami, a trip to Duke and Wake Forest back to back, and then they host Notre Dame. So two top 20 opponents on their horizon in Duke and Notre Dame. Quite a bit easier road ahead on paper for Florida State. Only one ranked team being Notre Dame coming up on October the 12th at Miami, Louisville, Boston College before then. That's why this game is so crucially important. This is the best team each of these teams will face this season. And it sets the stage for the run into the ACC tournament. On paper, they might not face the test like each other again till the ACC final. And then beyond that again until they maybe square off for a third time in the NCAA tournament. Isabel Cox. Pass Nesbeth. Meza. Crowd trying to will them to an equalizing goal. Down two to one, brace for Dudley, it won't come here. Coming up later at five Eastern, two Pacific over on ESPN2, the second of our WNBA playoff semifinal games. Enrique Gunbawale 
and the Wings take on Asia Wilson and the defending champion Aces. You can always catch the game live on the ESPN app as well. Zan for win on the FSU side. Nesbeth, 20 minutes to play at Doran's Field here in Chapel Hill. With Lori Lindsay, I'm Joe Malfa. I'm happy to have you with us today on ESPNU. Number three, Florida State, a two to one lead over top right North Carolina, a brace for freshman Jordan Dudley got her first goal in the 17th minute and her second came in the second half off a header Ellie Sentinel equalized in the middle right before halftime but then 17 minutes in the second half Dudley again 17 minutes into the game 17 minutes into the second half and it's two to one Florida State Fossey Top of the area now, Colton. I like that one back. Pardon me, Patterson on the strike. Oh, Colton got it right the first time. Go with your gut, Lori. <laughs> Two changes coming now for FSU. Depay comes back on for pace. Probably just some quick breathers for the starters of FSU. Maggie Taitano for Nesbeth. One last chance to catch their breath before the final dozen or so minutes when you imagine Brian Penske would have his 11 starters back out there again. And you know he would imagine that he doesn't want to make some of these changes consistently but given the quick turnaround the early start time to this game the amount of back and forth for both sides a lot of mileage a lot of mileage a lot of minutes for these players. And as part of the point that you made in the first half, Joe, about having a smaller squad, particularly for Brian Pinsky's team, making sure that everybody feels a part of it, gets the minutes, gets some experience, because this game really is when you find out the most about yourself. Smallest little details, managing it, whether it's in possession or going direct, and have to dig deep in these moments. Rubimbis comes back on, and Bella Sember gets her first bit of action today. So Anson Dorrance countering the changes made by Brian Penske. Bossy. Nice give and go with Isabel Cox. Nothing comes of it, though, unfortunately, for the Tar Heels. Pressure to win it back. Sember. Dalene. Back inside for Evelyn Shores on that left foot to the back post. Not it down centrally. Cox on the turn. Leaves it instead for Rabimbis. Taken down. Already saw one penalty call in the UNC's favor today. Not this time. Given away uncharacteristically by Savvy King. Olsen. Dudley. Oh, great ball into space here. Maggie Taitano coming in. Taitano blocked. And a chance to put that up too. Well, there's been some real quality in terms of ball movement for Florida State that last ball played out from Dudley just driven on the ball with pace don't always see that level in the college game just to be able to open up and allow for a 1v1 situation and this young player Dudley for Florida State has it all the ability to score goals but also be a playmaker in deeper positions as well as we saw on that last ball straight out there UNC cries for a foul and it's coming the other way. Ella Peruta. Fossi. Rubimbis tried to feed Cox. We slipped in behind. Now Bella Sember. 
Maddie Dahlin cutting in. Dahlin over the bar. Well, if I'm North Carolina, I'm getting Dahlin the ball every single time once it gets into the attack because she drew the penalty kick in the first half and then she started the play that saw the equalizer at the end just moments later at the end of the first half as well and here she is again just driving being proactive forward thinking trying to get another equalizer as North Carolina is trailing these last 15 minutes but she has certainly been a bright spot in the attack for the Tar Heels Side against Dudley. Completed it with a heck of a strike, mind you, upper 90, but offside. Alex Billiter comes over just to remind her hey, if the whistle blows, don't go ahead and finish that off, no matter how nice the <laughs> shot looks. Sitting on a hat trick, the freshman had three goals in her first seven games, now two today. Under a quarter of an hour remains. Kella oh, oh. Peruta. Looking back, Dudley pressuring. Elgin. Now King, back out for Della Peruta. Maddie Dahlin. Dahlin service, cleared away by Van Zetten. Drive from distance blocked by Gilchrist. You wonder when Sentinel might come back on for UNC. There's a goal and seven shots today before she was taken off. Sember creates some space. Sember plays it off her shores. Now Dahlin. Dahlin strike the flex off the post and in. Some luck that went their way. And UNC's level again. Well, this is when they're at their best. So they're getting numbers forward, being patient, a bit methodical. This is one of the better passages of play that we've seen from North Carolina, side to side, waiting for the run to develop, and then just a bit of luck in the end, because Gilchrist does such a good job, hands behind her back to make sure she doesn't give a handball, but then just a lunge in the end, and it deflects off her foot, ricochets on the inside of the post, but all the credit to North Carolina moving the ball quickly, getting players in and around the box, and then forcing the little error from Florida State late in this game. And once again, now lean at the heart of it, doing what she does best, taking players on, whipping balls in, taking shots, being proactive. Gets the equalizer with 13 minutes left to go. ACC All-Freshman team with four goals last year. This is her first goal of her sophomore season. And with 13 to play, we are level again. Only the second goal FSU has allowed in the second half. They're now eight games this season. Sometimes, Laura, you put it toward goal, you hope for something good to happen. Off a defender, off the post, and in. We saw it from the reverse angle inside the net. Roque had that lined up for a routine stop, if not for the deflection, but there's nothing you can do if you're Gilchrist in that spot. And it's these moments when it's so difficult to play against North Carolina because you're bringing up players like Izzy Cox, who has a completely different profile than the other strikers for North Carolina. More of a target player, draws attention when she's playing back to goal. She earns North Carolina a corner kick here, and they'll be certainly hunting for that go-ahead goal now after trailing a couple different times in this game. But this is where the growth starts to take place for Florida State. Getting touch tight, communication, not conceding an opportunity here late in this game. And defensively, just stepping up a bit more to see if they can close out this game and at least get the tie. In swinger. And away. If not led today, North Carolina. Up, 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 up. 
December steps to it. All the momentum now on North Carolina's side. Felt like this in the first half after they tied it as well. Darlene closing in. Darlene puts it in front. Robin Mish lets it through for Della Peruta. Get up! Get up! Oh yeah, Della Peruta with plenty of space. Serves it up, cleared by Gilchrist, not far enough. What a turn underneath by Sember. Chance to shoot one here, blocked by Gilchrist. And a collision in the box will end the threat for UNC. Sember comes through and fouls Nesbitt hard. Well, when we talk about growth, it's just watch it the far side right now for Florida State because Van Zanten, the freshman, has come in for win the last seven or eight minutes and it's not it's about not diving in committing all your force to allow north carolina to play around you and we've seen that a few times and that's where the attacks develop for north carolina waiting for the pressure to come and this quick combination or a 1v1 situation that's allowed or led to the opportunities for north carolina last few minutes and so that's where florida state has to keep the balance positionally not diving in just being mindful of where they are connected to their back line as you're going to see the substitutes the starters for Florida State come back on all back out there now with 10 to play here at Dorrance Field back and forth affair Dudley in the 17th Sentinel in the 42nd tied 1-1 one, one at the half Dudley 17 minutes into the second half UNC just moments ago now it's FSU on the charge again Olsen for Dudley sitting on a hat trick Dudley the freshman had a block rebound and saved by Allen well this game has had it all in the end back in the fourth in terms of the lead two teams really good opportunities and Dudley that second ball that lands to her just can't commit everything to it with numbers around her defensively coming up on the top of the hour here anybody looking for Kentucky Florida it'll begin on ESPN news and the app will join it in action after our game comes to its conclusion Dalene lets it fly saved by Roque I think she's making the case, Joe, for herself to be a starter on this mm -hmm. team. Everything has gone through her. Typically, we're talking about Sintnor, Meza, but she has been direct, confident when she gets on the ball and has all the tools to be the difference maker. Well, the drama's not done yet. Florida State, four goals in the five final 10 minutes of games this season. UNC, three goals in the final 10 minutes of games this season. Well, the stage set for more here, perhaps. When these teams met last year in Cary in the final four, it was a 3-2 win for UNC. You can see that score line come up again. Take it all the way through. I also and the end, ran out of steam, put it over the bar. That was Taylor Hoff, pardon me. Tomorrow we will Pardon me, women's sports will take over the afternoon every Sunday on ACC Network. And next week, we start at noon Eastern with soccer. Number 16, Duke, squares off against number 22, Virginia. That's Lori Lindsay's number 22, Virginia. And it's a volleyball doubleheader, Florida State hosting Duke. And we cap the afternoon with fifth-ranked Louisville at NC State in Raleigh at 4 o'clock Eastern. tell neither of these teams, Lori, are content with a draw. Treating this as it's almost a must-win scenario here because it can mean so much in the rankings, the RPI, the ACC standing, so much at stake. And beside that, these two teams just don't like each other very much and you want to beat the other. <laughs> it's scooped over the top here. Sember has to turn awkwardly and give it away to Nesbeth. Well, the word that we use coming into this game is mentality and that's what we've seen from both. Digging deep finding little moments that they can take advantage of and players rising to the occasion. Dalene, a number of opportunities. 
big part of the, the two goals that North Carolina has scored. And then for Dudley, has been the player that scored both goals for Florida State. So, such a, a fun game, a long history between these two teams that you wouldn't expect anything else in this back and forth, tight competitive match. Under 6.30 now. Who might step up and be the difference maker? Echigini has been awfully quiet at the attacking end today. Has made her presence known defensively and in the midfield. Sentinor, the other player you highlighted off the top, Lori, has her goal, has seven shots. And Colton back on the field for Rabimbis for UNC. If Florida State can net the winner, they have not won in Chapel Hill since 2012. A one no scoreline 11 years ago. Almost equally as rare if it ends up as a draw. Last 10 times these teams have met only once as it ended in a tie. Brilliant ball up the wing. Sentinor latches onto it. Sentinor floats it toward the back. so deadly because they go and they go with numbers and they do it for 90 minutes this time Sentinor the exact player that you want to get isolated just splits the two defenders but then watch her she just gets her head up picks out the pass and this is where you have to be spot on if you're the opposition to North Carolina defensively staying touch tight EY in the wrong position and then they've got numbers, and it's Fossey, who we didn't see any action until this second half just cuts in. But it's a fantastic first time finish off the ball from Sentinor to take the lead for the first time for North Carolina here at home. It's the two players who impressed Anton Dorrance the most in the last game against UVA, Sentinor and Fossey. You thought about starting Fossey because of it. Maybe now I'm making a case to start the next one, at least for the Tar Heels. Dudley. And a free kick coming for Florida State, a yellow card to boot. the argument that she got the ball but she also did get huff a crunching tackle making a statement the rookie center back coming in hard being aggressive with her approach and exactly what you want after you've gone ahead don't allow florida state any opportunity easy looks on goal left, less than five minutes left to go i mean it would almost be fitting if florida state is able to punch back here the way this game has gone today. 35 combined shots, 12 combined shots on target between these teams, five combined goals, number one versus number three at its finest. And it's number three looking to respond now again. Huff standing over it with her left foot. And Zanton there as well as a right-footed option. Seems more likely it'll be Huff from here. It is Huff toward the back of the six, the glancing header from Olsen is wide. And I wouldn't be surprised, Joe, if North Carolina is just happy to slow things down now, allow some of the clock to tick off, and you're going to see Mesa come back in. And that's a player that has extraordinary control of the ball. 
getting her on it, allowing her just to manage this game, see it out. Four to go. Dudley, been dangerous today with two goals. Dudley cutting in, Dudley almost completing her hat trick. That would have been something, but a goal kick. <laughs> well, if there's a player that's gonna get one back for Florida State, it's Dudley. Uh, and this player is extraordinary. I just look at the positioning, the confidence to take on 1v1, splits the two defenders, gets the finishing touch a bit wrong. That's really the first time that we've seen that all game so far, two to her name already, and been such a constant threat in front of goal for Florida State. Not just this game, but the entire season as well. Would be completely surprised if she's not a Rookie of the Year candidate. UNC holds on here with all the pressure in the world on the men's team. They come up at four o'clock here on Doran's Field. Only program in the country to have both the men and women undefeated at this point. UNC. As you mentioned, Lori starting to try and take some precious seconds off the clock here. Slow to get it back in. Ryan Penske wasn't happy about it. Tried to have Alex Billiter stop the clock. Dudley on the run. Dudley working through. King at the last moment comes back to win it. No intentional pass back. Well, what a touch. And they're having to defend her by committee at this point in time because if she's going alone, there's no stopping her. Warren safe for Allen to come off her line, keep control of it. And there's the, the slow return to play. No rush at all if you're North Carolina. Tar Heels took two or three last year. Florida State, though the only of these two who lifted any trophies last year when all was said and done, because they got UNC in the ACC title game. UNC got them back in the final four, but fell just shy of a national title. what the aspirations are this year and every year for Anton Dorrance. And they could be off to an 8-0-3 start, number one in the country. 90 seconds remaining for Florida State to try and earn something out of this. And that won't help the cause. They led today twice, 1-0 and 86, potentially the winner. 50 ticks of the clock remaining. Not a great goal kick though from Emmy Allen. This could be trouble. Fortunately, a bounce in favor of the Tar Heels and they can send it to safety up the field. A free kick though for the Seminoles. And maybe one last chance, Joe, just to lump this ball in. But if not, Florida State will certainly be disappointed in this result. Dudley. Working on King, Dudley blocked. It's out for a corner, one last try for the Seminoles. I don't know what I'm talking about. He's <laughs> just like touches the ball off and running. They still have an opportunity as they're gonna try to get this one in, in play as quickly as possible from the left-footed half. Five seconds to go, whipped in from the corner, punched away by Allen, it's a goal at the death to die! Wow! <laughs> With one second to spare, a 3-3 tie between two of the top teams in the nation. Well, you wouldn't expect anything less from this game. It is Nesbeth that attempts, allows for the second opportunity for Florida.
able to stay as she goes up against Allen. There it is. Doesn't allow her to get a good clean clearance and then the put back. And exactly what you would expect from this tight match back and forth, end to end for both teams. And ultimately a deserved tie because both teams have been excellent finding ways to punish the other doing what they can, leaving it all on the field. And it's a freshman, Van Zanten, and what an important goal that is away from home for Florida State to at least get something out of this game. She will never forget her first career goal. That will do it for today. And what is gonna be a game of the year candidate at the death, two seconds left, a 3-3 tie between UNC and FSU. Yeah, not surprising because this game back and forth and a deserved tie after taking two leads in this game for Florida State fought their way back because the one thing you know about North Carolina is you have to compete, you have to be disciplined and focus on both sides of the ball against them because they're going to put numbers forward. Almost looked like this game was going to be out of reach for Florida State, but one thing that Pinsky told us coming into this one is that they have an edge, they're going to match that competitiveness, and with the history between these two teams, that's exactly what we saw.